Let's see who made it past the title. Emotional baggage. We gotta let go. I really hope this doesn't become a yearly video I need to make. Uh, we had a conversation about the price increases with the OnePlus 7 launches, tried to talk about worth and value, and here we are again with the OnePlus 8. The most emotionally invested OnePlus fans can't seem to let go of an idea and a price point. Remember when OnePlus's were $399? I remember when OnePlus's were $399. Prices climb and brands have to pivot. Making zero margin phones for Android enthusiasts is a surefire way to fail in the long term. You build up a good grassroots fan base, and then you try to push more mass market. But along the way, OnePlus has managed to maintain way more of their core competition DNA than I was expecting they would. Let's do the time warp. Looking back to this magic, low-cost OnePlus we all remember, what did the OnePlus 3 launch at? $399. That same year, what was the MSRP on the Galaxy S7? $669. The iPhone 7 arrived at $649. The OnePlus 3 was a little less than two-thirds the cost of a premium Galaxy or iPhone, and the OnePlus 3T was $40 more. That's the first myth we need to bust. Uh, OnePlus's used to be 90% of the phone for half the price. That's not mathematically accurate, so we should probably stop making that claim. Uh, the only time it's been close was for the original OnePlus One, when a Galaxy S5 cost around $650 unlocked against the OnePlus's $299. But even then, in North America, most people were buying phones on contract. A 16 gigabyte Samsung on two year contract cost $199. North American phone reviews back then often didn't even list unlocked costs because everyone was buying on contract. Time travel back to the present. New technologies and higher component costs. iPhone 11 Pro, 64 gigabytes for $999. Galaxy S20, double the storage for $999. OnePlus 8, $699. From the OnePlus 3 to the OnePlus 8, we haven't lost nearly as much ground as people are complaining about. The whole market moved upscale. Inflation is working against us, and we have no competition against Qualcomm to drive down chipset and radio costs, so this is the reality for every manufacturer this year. But we've got folks flipping out about a $999 OnePlus 8 Pro. So let's play that game too. It's my argument there's a significant difference between a phone line that starts at $999 and one that caps at $999. Against a Galaxy S20, you'll get twice as much storage, the same amount of RAM, a bigger battery with a faster cable charger in the box, and an option for faster wireless charging. Similar lifestyle features like reverse wireless charging, an actual IP certification, a 120 hertz display that can crank that fast at full quad HD resolution, and a larger main camera sensor. That last point is a decently surprising upgrade over the rest of the premium smartphone market. And to top it all off, OnePlus has built a decent reputation for fast, consistent software support, regularly beating Samsung with security patches and major updates, and offering solid support for older devices. Does battle really well against the Galaxy S 20 plus, which means there's already a price difference we got a factor for. Again, the only way you can't see this as a competitive value is if you're grading Samsung on an insane curve that I don't think they really deserve. Against Apple, currently, this hardware fight gets a bit silly. A bigger, faster, higher resolution display, a huge camera sensor improvement, four times more storage, a bigger battery, faster wired and wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, comparable performance for heavy lifting use like video rendering, a 5G radio today, and better Wi-Fi and LTE performance over the Intel radio and the 11 Pro. And again, if we want this to be a comparable hardware fight, we have to move to the iPhone 11 Pro Max and upgrade the storage where Apple now prices at $1,250. You'll pay 25% more just to make this a more fair hardware fight. The iPhone still doesn't walk away as a victor. It's just more fair for 25% more. Sure, value is in the eye of the beholder, but you gotta let go of the flagship killer baggage. OnePlus moved on, and so should you. If we're going to complain about value and comparable worth, then you actually need to compare 
the value and worth. We love underdog fights in the tech community, but we also get a sick thrill out of tearing companies down. It's not a good look for gadget geeks. It's easy to lazily throw out a pithy, oh, I don't see where OnePlus is doing anything to earn that higher price tag. <laughs> that means you probably didn't look. I'm gonna have plenty more to say about the OnePlus 8, OnePlus 8 Pro. I'm wrapping up longer term full reviews, doing audio and camera testing, and I'm trying to work out some issues with a comparison between these phones and phones like the LG V60. So stay tuned. There's a lot more to talk about, especially as the phones have been improving quite a bit with software updates. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos and subscribing to the channel. More than just reading off a spec sheet to declare winners and losers based on the SEO popularity of different manufacturers, we want to dig a bit deeper than that. This stuff is a lot more fun when we have good competition, and this is going to be a really weird year for gadget competition. So if you'd like to help support the production of these conversations, I have some links down below, including a link from OnePlus where you can get yourself a little coupon code if you want to pick up a OnePlus and grab some accessories along the way. But you also might consider joining the list of names currently scrolling by on your screen. A growing community of fun, like-minded tech pals, a huge resource for me as I'm planning future videos and editorials, editorials like these. This commentary here was worked out in some conversations on my private Discord. So I hope you check these people out because they're super cool people, maybe the coolest people. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next video.